Clean order at 610, 611, excuse me, for Frontier Regional. Um, I want, and I'll call the meeting to order for the uh, Joint School Committee for Union 38. <clears throat> and before we start, why don't we just go around the table real quick? Your name, where you're from, because some people are new here, so Bob Decker, Frontier. Mary Raymond Deerfield and Frontier. Uh, Damien Fosno, uh, live in South Deerfield, and I'm on Frontier. Trevor McDaniel, uh, Deerfield. Ashley Dion, Conway. Phil Cantor, Conway, and Frontier. Katie Edwards, Waitley. Maureen Nichols, Waitley. Greg Batchock, Sunderland. Daisy Shaw, Sunderland. John Fulton, Sunderland. Dave Sharp, Deerfield. Bill Mayer, PC, Frontier. Judy Pierce, Frontier. Bob Hallow, Waitley, and Frontier. And Ken Cutterback, Deerfield. <clears throat> uh, the first thing that we're going to do for uh, Union 30, uh, excuse me, Frontier, is to approve the minutes from April 6th. I move to accept the minutes. Second. 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 Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? These are just voting members. Just voting members, yeah. First thing is uh, for Frontier is any public comment out there? Anybody want to speak? Talk to us? Okay. And for the same, you can, okay. you can have public comment uh, for both. New business, we're going to review the Federal Compliance Special Education Program Plan and Statement. Who are we going to turn that over to? Hi, Karen. Hi, Bob. Step on up. Thank you. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time, but the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education asks that every few years um, that the school committee chairs and the superintendent and the special education director sign off on what we call the special education program plan statement. There's 20 um, federal compliance criteria in here, and really for the Paper Reduction Act, they just ask that we you signed off on it. Um, I can assure you that these are your federal individual disability education act statutes and we go beyond compliance. Um, I'm happy to go over them, but I figured this is it's due in October. The quickest way to do this was to come here before all of you and present each chair. Uh, you have to sign off initial each compliance criteria. Uh, Diane kept you on it put a little tab on each one to show you where you have to put your initials. And on in the very back page, uh, you do have to sign off on the criteria. Again, I've done this uh, many years ago now uh, to show you how quickly I could do all 20 of them, or I could just leave it for you to read. Um, but just so you have an example of what they are, uh, you're signing off on things that say we offer students uh, that are eligible for the disability uh, it's saying we have a full continuum of services within our school district. Um, it's saying that we comply with confidentiality. Uh, there's 20 of them, like I said, parent participation that we do allow uh, parents at the team meetings and that we do go out of our way to include parents as part of the team. So again, we are really for your basic standard of compliance that we have to be signed off on because they are federal compliance um, and on file with the department in order for us to get continue to get our 
Question? Question. Um, who else signs off on it besides the school committee chair? The school committee chair, the yes. superintendent, and the special education Oh, and I'm sorry, the end of the school sign up. Any other? Bob? So, move that the chairman be authorized to sign it. I'd like to second that, please. Frontier, all in favor? Make a motion to for the union to have the chair sign. Okay. I'll second that. And since we are five different districts, I can be the chair of each district. So would it be more appropriate to take the vote in the individual committee yeah. meetings? Yeah. So we'll take it in the individual committee meetings. We'll table your okay. would you like to withdraw your motion? I will withdraw my motion. <coughs> <coughs> Mr. Benito, do you like? I will take those to the individual meeting for you. I appreciate the cooperation. <laughs> <laughs> Since I see collaboration. collaboration. I have to go to you. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Yeah, thank you. Next. That was fast. We don't want to hang around with ball games on. Next is the wellness committee update. We have some wonderful people on the wellness committee. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, I'm Kristen Gordon. I'm the council of County Greenwood School. And I'm Sarah Mitchell, the director of secondary education at Frontier. Uh, we are the wellness committee. We have been working together for the last three years. We have been working together for the last three years. We have been working together for the last three years. We have been working together for the last three years. And we wanted to just give you a little bit of an overview of what that process is going to look like and what it uh, might result in. Um, so we put together a timeline for reviewing our procedures is really what we're going to be looking at. We'll also look at the policy briefly and if there are any changes that need to be made to the policy that will come back to each of the committees or vote. But at this point, we're really diving into the procedures and go along with the policy. So, we put together a very small initial committee. It's uh, Kristen Gordon, myself, and Meg Birch, she's a uh, nurse leader in Conway. And we're going to be meeting July through January to really delve in and make some draft changes or make some changes to procedures and create a draft. Um, obviously, just the three of us is not enough to review the whole wellness procedures, and we're going to expand that committee. It will at the very least um, include a uh, cafeteria manager, Teacher, um, health teacher from Frontier, a parent, um, and then any additional members that the community really feels needs to look at. We decided to design it that way because it's a lot easier for three people to develop a draft than it is for a committee of eight to develop a draft. Once we have the draft, all the are off and everything's on the table again for that whole committee to review. Uh, but we thought we'd be a little bit more agile if we could go out to eight we're hoping to have it completed by April, and we uh, present that to the administrative team for their reviews and comments, and then again decide whether we need to make policy changes when we come back to school. So after looking at the regulations and um, our previous wellness procedure plan and other districts' plans, update plans, um, the sections that we're going to be covering within this plan, and again, as Sarah said, this is a draft to start from, but as committee members only for certain. Um, an introduction, the team, the member, and the roles, goals, the actual implementation, what's the plan, what are the practices, best practices in wellness and um, education, uh, the steps that we'll take and the standards that we'll need within the plan. Uh, section for nutrition, nutrition education, um, physical activity slash physical education. There's a lot going on in the schools besides physical education, so we want to make sure those things. It's also great, it's also great for parents who might be coming into the district to look at the wellness plan and see some of the great things that we're doing throughout the district. Um, fitness, health education, community engagement, professional development, and an evaluation process um, so that we can see how things are working and if we're doing that kind of lens. So those are the, uh, the sections that we're going to cover, at least we're starting with. 
we want to make the doc document uh, reader friendly, not something that um, someone's going to pick up and say, well, this is too big <coughs> to look at, so we want to make sure we have it here. And then um, Sarah and I handed out to you tonight something called the Smart Lunchroom Scorecard <coughs> that we have asked the principals who, are, who, have, um, who have been great. We asked them to ask their cafeteria managers to fill out the scorecard so that we can see where we stand in the district. This is sort of twofold. Um, number one, to give us some information uh, and, and how to improve uh, the food that we're serving in the cafeteria and increase buying in our children who don't have to buy school lunches. But also it's sort of like a self-reflection or validation. So of course when you get to, there's a section uh, on the atmosphere on the back. Cafeteria staff smile and the students and not entry. Well, most people are proud of their work and they have that. But it gives them some reflection that kids will buy lunches if you are friendly and, and um, promote your product. If it is, if you do have a travel, <coughs> if, you, um, if it, it is separated in a nice way. Um, Flory brought some of those ideas to me as a principal as well, ways to increase uh, children buying our products. Um, so we thought it would be great to do a little assessment from the cafeteria managers to our cafeterias. Um, later on, we might ask the administrators to do it, but this was a first step for us in the process. And our last item, kind of updating about wellness in the district. Uh, for years, um, I've been having conversations with principals and myself, as well as our health teachers, about wouldn't it be great to have a little bit more health education at the elementary school level? And we have a lot of um, expertise up here. We have three fabulous health teachers that work at Frontier. Um, and this year, we've gotten a little bit of federal entitlement money that came our way unexpectedly, but we can use the money that got cut. But um, we have some funding that could specifically fund somebody to do a little bit of health education. So we're going to try a pilot program this year with grade six and bring one of our health educators to the elementary school because of the the frontier gets dismissed at 215 and the elementary schools don't get dismissed at 203. We think we might be able to get a half an hour lesson in four times. Just as a little, let's see how it goes. Uh, let's try something out and um, experiment with it. Um, and hopefully that will go well and we'll, you know, the race will see kind of Thank you. That would be wonderful. I have a question. <clears throat> um, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education Office of School Nutrition wrote us up on all five schools on a corrective action plan that this be done. So will it be to the school committees to be voted by June? So we usually present the month before, they vote the second month. So we, we, we actually we actually checked that out because that was the, the initial impetus was, oh, we've got to get these procedures all done. Our, our wellness policy actually is up to date and in compliance and the school, one of the I think it was Conway and Pass that didn't have the up-to-date policy. So we should be covered under that right up because the policies were all redone um, the last year that Marty was here, so that would have been year and a half ago. So we're actually in compliance with the policy piece. So maybe you and I can get together, you can tell me where that is so sure. I can send it off to them and exactly. I can get five caps finished. Yes. Yes. Well, Patty, our goal would be our goal would be to have it done um, you know there's no process because we we'll we'll But our goal would be to have it done. Yeah. Also in addition to yeah. anybody else have any questions? I, I just wanted to say thank you for taking the health just over to start to Deerfield Elementary and you know hopefully we can continue that and expand it further. Is this for students and staff or just for students? Yes. Just so for students. Yeah, so right now we're using the But the wellness program in general is for it. The wellness program in general is, is PK through 12. But just students? Or is there a staff component? <clears throat> we were, during um, the um, physical, there was a section that we, some, the schools are doing some great things with wellness. Mm -hmm. I know at Conway we received a wellness for staff. Mm -hmm. So we did want to add in one of the sections 
some of the things that all of the schools are doing for staff, you know, some you know, are doing yoga or, or the um, Fitbit challenge, you can think of the wellness challenge, and different things are going on in the schools. So we would like to capture mm -hmm. that. Yeah. It seems like it would be make sense. Yeah, right. and there is a professional development component in there also. And again, um, everything, every document that we want people to look at, we want to showcase what we're doing in the district. So mm -hmm. it would be great to put the staff in as well. Our health insurance group, Hampshire Group Insurance Trust, gives out mini wellness grants to each school every year. And I do believe uh, Conway has one and Frontier has one. And the um, application process is probably going on right now we have a meeting with them next week and we'll get some information and we'll get that information to the principals but usually it's a teacher who steps up and writes the grant and submits it to the health insurance company and that's for our staff anybody else have any questions thank you, thank you. Thank you. well we're going to go right from wellness right into a food service with a great opportunity so uh, we're looking for a food service director's position and who are we going to turn it over to you actually I am going to let Patty and uh, Flory take this okay <clears throat> so I um, have a, uh, a template for a, a job description that um, that's a rough draft um, it's pretty comprehensive and I will pass those out yeah, I'm thank oh, you man. Um, so I sent you all a report um, yesterday. I, I hope you were able to take some time. Um, and it just it, it just reflected on the process as a whole. Um, our schools, lunch programs, all five of them are losing money. And we're using educational dollars to supplement those programs. Uh, in an effort to stop the flow, we had a consultant come in and he gave us some um, recommendations of things that we could do to increase our revenue, decrease our labor costs, and decrease our food costs. Um, and we took some of those recommendations uh, and during this process our, we have a food service director of three schools and she retired. So then we were left with no food service director to help us implement. So the consultant recommended one of his colleagues who happens to live up here in Franklin County, and that would be Ms. Flory Page, and we hired her. And she came on board um, in uh, August. And some of the areas that became um, very apparent is that we had no documentation of any procedures. There's no oversight or supervision of the staff. We had commodity inventories that were overstocked and out of date. Uh, menus were not contemporary and not appealing to students. We had no consistency in the financial reporting. There was no organization between commodity ordering and menu planning. Um, and this is a key piece because we have to order our commodities in March for the following year. So we had some schools that were hoarding cheese, we had some schools that were hoarding ground beef, and then they couldn't, they had so much they couldn't use it and it expired. Um, and so you, you want to do your commodity ordering with your menu planning, and we weren't doing that. And that's a key break because the reason our food costs are, so, one of the reasons our food costs are so high is because we're not taking advantage of our free food and we're using our money to purchase food. And it, we got to flip flop that back. Um, the other thing, there was no ability for staff input and um, there was no use in date of data for menu planning and inventory ordering. We had no data to say, gee, the kids really love it when we have meatball subs, but they really hate it when we have breakfast for lunch. No one was using data, so the menus weren't being changed, and nor were we using any data to say, well, the last time we served the turkey sub, we had 20% of our kids order it, so let's make 20% <laughs> this time. And so food was going to waste. So we need data. In order to get that data, we implemented, with the permissions of all the school committees, the three remaining schools, we had Meals Plus. <clears throat> so this is what Ms. Page has done since she's been here. She got the Meals Plus installed, programmed, all our staff trained, and the system has been in operation in all five schools since the first day of school. All our inventories have been updated and they will be taken monthly. This needs to be a monthly task. Um, we did have some staff reductions that were implemented. The menus have been revised. All our a la carte items have been evaluated and priced accordingly. When we sat down and looked at it, we were charging less for some of our a la carte items than we were paying for them. 
So no one was looking at pricing. So we did that. Um, we changed our staff pricing because the staff pricing did not include the meals tax. So we were paying the meals tax out of our pockets. So we adjusted that. Um, our food service staff are now accountable for their work production and they're included in the menu planning process and the production decisions. And lastly, um, we are really focused on using, maximizing the use of our commodities and using our food bid items. We do have some schools who purchase off bid, which we're not supposed to do. And that also, when they do that, they're paying a higher price than the bid price that we got. So those are just some of the things that we've been able to accomplish in the six weeks. Um, what we're asking tonight is for the school committees to approve the hiring of one food service director for all five schools. So if that were to happen tonight, um, we would get, go out and advertise and recruit for a new hire. Um, the position would be an eight hour day for 210 days. We'll no longer employ the position over the summer months. Um, the projected increase for the position being responsible for all five schools is approximately 7,000. We know that that's an increased cost, but we think by implementing, having one person implementing these changes, um, the small changes will continue to grow into more savings and the position will end up paying for itself. Uh, and also the position would now be shared amongst five schools instead of three. Uh, once we have the new hire on board, we're gonna continue to look at our food costs and our staffing. When we were looking at this review, we noticed that the wages between the food service workers, between the schools, was disparate. There's no rhyme or reason across the board, and we want to correct that. Um, and also, we want to do a restructuring. So we would have one food service director, and then in each building, there would be a team leader, and then our food service workers. Um, and they would all be trained to do the multiple jobs, serving the ca and, re and using the register. Um, and again, um, I think the point that, I'm, that, that we're focusing on is that we don't want to keep using our educational dollars. As, as our budgets get tighter and tighter, we're going to have to be making some cuts in education to supplement the lunch program. And I, I don't think we want to be in that position. So this was our attempt to be preemptive and try to reduce our losses. So we're asking for your support um, tonight in, in having this, this position. And if anyone has any questions. For myself or Ms. Page, we'd be happy to try and answer them. Bob, I got several. <clears throat> uh, the food service director is going to be responsible to the Georgetown School Committee. No, I'm sorry, I did not. I I, I was copying, uh, cutting and pasting at the last minute, Mr. Decker. So that will be corrected. And the Metro North Collaborative is where they're going to buy their food. Nope, I'm sorry, it's CVS. So I haven't finished editing the report, but thank you for bringing that to my attention. Next question. Uh, where's the food going to be cooked? At each of the five schools. We're what not we don't. Be, what we're we, not going to be cooking it here and no, transporting. No, absolutely not. One of our goals is that each school keep their own personality. <coughs> we don't want to lose that. Each school has their own e unique individual styles, and we and we don't want to hamper that because right now, if we were to do that, that would that would we've got morale I think a little bit up. Everyone's like excited. They've got input, and we don't want to crush that. And I think that if we did that, that would crush that. So that's absolutely not a goal. Well, I thought I heard something the last time we spoke about the, in the presentation. I thought I heard about, I got the impression of that was some of the thought was to move the food. No, bulk purchasing. So we would bulk okay. purchase and so, then bring the food, to just the, the, the raw ingredients. We could save some money by doing bulk purchasing and delivering the raw materials. to. So schools. we're going to be able to allocate the cost to the respective towns it gets shipped to? Yes. Okay. Uh, the next question is, what is the proposed salary of the food service director and how is it going to be split? Well, um, I... How it would be split is how we split all of our central office personnel by the percentage of the October 1st October census. Yes. Okay. Um, what the salary will be, that's, that's <coughs> dependent if they're going to be doing the three schools or the five schools. But we're looking in the range of $30 to $35 an hour for an eight-hour day, 210 
Uh, currently we're paying 52, adding about seven for the five schools would bring it in at around $59,000 a year. And what were we paying per hour before for the performance? Uh, I believe it was $24 and 60 some odd cents. So it's basically for the whole almost year. a- it, for, for, But that was for, for an entire year. year. Yeah, but it's almost a 50% increase, you know, in the, what the salary is, you're going to thirty-five dollars or thirty-six dollars an hour for twenty-four. But we're also asking for bit better qualifications from this person. This person has to have a bachelor or an associate's in some type of food service, either culinary, nutrition. We don't have that right now, and that's the expertise that we're missing. Okay. The next part of my question deals with um, the the staffing levels. I'm only concerned about Frontier because I'm not mm -hmm. in the others. But uh, you mentioned that there's parity differences in what some of the workers make. Mm -hmm. That I assume Frontier makes the, pays the least? No, they pay the most. They pay the most. So are we going to reduce the salary of our people? I don't know how we would do that. I don't either, but, but I'm just asking you a question. But one of, the, one of the commentaries in the report was that we pay our workers well above what, average, what the average norm is for food service workers. So part of what we're going to do when we're looking at the restructuring, once we have the new person on, is we're going to be doing salary surveys with our, re, with our districts here in Franklin County to see what they're paying. Um, and we're also going to be probably, I, my hope would be that we would bring a new pay scale for all five schools to you in January, uh, and then that would be approved, and then that would be the increase or that we, we no one's gonna lose money. But we wanna have one salary schedule, and we're hoping, depending on when this person comes on board, we'd have that new salary schedule for the, because we're gonna add a new layer, the team leader would be different than a food service worker because okay. they'll have more responsibility. Are any of these employees gonna qualify for health insurance? They benefits? all qualify for health insurance right now. They do now. They, all, they already they, did. But if you reduce the hours. Some of them lost it. Some of them lost it already. Mm -hmm. And this, are, what is the anticipated number of, like you had, say Frontier's got six uh, uh, workers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, how many of those are working four hours a day? Uh, five of them. One does not. One does not. Right. But um, the health insurance costs are, if, if they're getting the health insurance, which are, if they work in the hours, they're eligible for. Correct. And yeah. all it's all six did, and now only five did. So when you stop and you figure what their what their cost is to the district by the hour. It's substantial. Yeah. That t that t if they're making twenty, it's probably close to twenty-seven or eight dollars an hour. Correct. And that's why our consultant said our wages are, are are high when you add the benefit because our benefit threshold is is low. So. But we, that's set by the state, so there's nothing we well, can do. Well, we, if we put another part timer on, we're not going to be less adding. hours. Then you could reduce the hours for the other people, and we wouldn't have to pay that huge health insurance cost. We've already made the reductions that we're going to make. Right now, we don't see any further reductions at this time. Well, I'm just looking at what what's coming on the budget and everything else. And, you know, declining enrollment being what it is. And whatever, well, so. if we lose a big chunk, then we would further reduce. But at this time, we've made the reductions that we think are prudent, and and we're our staff is adjusting to those schedules. Okay, but if one of the towns decides that they want to pay more money an hour, they can, uh, even after you put the director in, they can, they're not going to give up their rights to what they can pay. That's correct. That's why we would bring it to each school committee for a vote. Well, I think the whole idea is good. I just want to make sure that we, we put everything in, out there so everybody understands it. And I'd like to make sure, and I know I discussed it with you this afternoon, I'd like to make sure it sunsets, that if yeah. it doesn't get an affirmative vote, it gets scrapped. Well, and, the, as, and so the, I think that was my last sentence in the report that I sent you, that like with anything else that we do, we need to review this in a year to see if it's working and give monthly updates about the progress that we're making. But my point is, if unless the board consciously decides to continue it, it should stop in a year and a half. And so that we actually have to sit down and think about it and it just doesn't roll forward. Correct. Because that's happened before. Yes, that's my point. 
Wait, I'm, Judy? Really, I'm confused. I'm sorry. What should stop? The position should yes. stop? I, I, Mr. I think what Mr. Decker, oh, if, if I can paraphrase, he's saying that if we don't find that this is effective, that we're not making any savings, that we need to review the process to see what is why we're going to continue doing this. Sure, but I, okay. But if you want to attract a good candidate, I don't think we want anything out there about this job being potentially scrapped next year. It'll be truthful, though. Well, no, you're just saying you're reviewing the program. To, I mean, all I think right. by all means, reviewing the program to make sure that we're getting what we want out of it. But I would just be careful about sunset being related to the director's position. Well, we've done sunsets before, and they haven't worked either. So, okay. Judy, did you have a question? Yeah, my question is about supervision. So, in uh, the the former food service director that worked for three schools reported to Patty. And the school principals. And the school principals. And the other two reported just to the school principals or also to you? To me, for financial, <coughs> for financial, they reported to me for their everyday work in the building, it would be the principals. Okay, and so for this one new position, consolidated position? It will do the same. The operational, if they have, if the principals have operational issues within their school, they would go to the food service director. And if there's financial issues, they would come to me. Um, and that, the other thing that we want to do too, right now there's no staff evaluations and we want to incorporate that. Well, that so then one. this person would also, not only will our staff now start being evaluated, but the food service director will have an evaluation that'll be done joint, sort of like we do with our itinerant teachers. I'll have input, the principals will have input as to the evaluation process. I think it needs to be clearer. Judy, the person. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, so, hold on. Judy, you have any I'm thoughts? I'm not going to. I'm going to be fitting. You okay? thoughts on my head, yeah. All right. Bill? Um, so I heard the word standardize, I think, in our last meeting. Ms. Page, I think that was one of the, we wanted to standardize kind of the, our, our goals of nutrition. And because, you know, not necessarily have each school, like you said, be prescribed, but a, a standardization would give us a, some metrics to start to evaluate how things are doing. To Dave's point, I don't think that we put it out there that it sunsets in a year and a half. If we have data on a monthly basis that tells us we're up, we're down, we're, you know, how things are going. We so we make corrections. So we'll be looking at the data every month. So we have, and, and we'll have data. A, we'll have data. B, we'll re be reviewing it every month. So we have time to make the corrections right. during the year. Not wait till we get to the end of the year and say, wow, well, how'd we lose all this yeah. money? We'll be doing it monthly <clears throat> now. And the food, one just one, the food service director would be responsible for quality control and making sure the data is real, making sure the, and, and it's presented to you in a, a way that the school committees can see it? Correct. Okay. Patty, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the new, <coughs> computer system at every school for kids who are paid, not paid, received lunches is 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 one of our ways of keeping track Correct. a lot better too. So yes. every school every school has <clears throat> spent money to purchase this uh, software that's supposed to supposed to help us. Correct. And then the, uh, what we need to do next, uh, and this is working with each town treasurer because we have we are five separate fiscal entities. We want one of the things we are hoping will help with our um, outstanding lunch balances is to let parents pay online. But because we're five separate financial institutions, we have to work with the four town treasurers. So that is something that Dr. Carey and I have on our list for our four, four town administrators meeting to start discussing with them. Ashley? I kind of answered my question. Oh. Katie? Um, I guess I just want to make a few comments. I wanted to remind us that this is, we're talking about people's livelihood, the staff that work in these positions, and I think that we, we owe it to them to really be as thoughtful as we can about these necessary changes and reorganization of this work. Um, I, th I think there's a much more positive way to go about this, and I also question that the goal is to have a zero balance at the end. I do think that the declining enrollment plays a huge part in a lot of what is going on here. I think the staff have worked hard and have done a great job. And just the fact that, you know, one of the things here is that you want pleasant, happy staff to be greeting your children. I think we still want that going forward. So 
I just encourage us to think about this in a way and hire someone who can really come in with a very positive change um, orientation and maybe the goal isn't to get to zero at every school. I'm not sure that's realistic. I don't know what the goal is. I, and Katie, you're right. I, I don't expect us to go to zero in one year, but if we see the losses coming down, and in some of the schools, we're so small, the metric that we're using, um, the meals per worker hour, we're never going to achieve it because we can't serve lunch with one person. So we're always going to be staffed, overstaffed at Conway and Waitley because they, we have a minimum of two people. So, so we have to recognize that, and correct. we want those people to feel important and right. happy. And I mean, those my kids love the people in the lunchroom, and they're really important to them. So I think we want to make sure we're thinking about all of that. Can I just ask what happened to the um, person, the food service director that was overseeing three schools? She retired. And was she she was effectively managing those three schools? That's a performance issue, and we can't discuss that in public, actually. So, um, you had earlier said that, or you had uh, written to us that the consultant was being paid $125 an hour. You had said at the last meeting, I think, that she's working 10 to 12 hours a day since August. So, I was wondering if you could give us a total as to right now what, what we're into for the consultant already and then what we're into just for the whole idea to get us to this point, how much have we spent? Which is including, we had to buy back the <coughs> previous food director's vacation pay or sick pays that she didn't use, which was not anticipated in the budget. What did that cost? What did it cost for that report? I, and, the, the report was $5,000. So, um, I only have one invoice from um, Ms. Page so far. Um, and that was $18,312.50 from August 7th to, that was for August. So we, Dr. Carey and I were not, we did not realize that that many hours were being utilized. So we- I told you that's how many hours were being utilized the first week of September. The need was so great, Mr. Cantor. We just, we didn't have any other recourse at that point. There so, were no procedures, there was, there were things that just were not- We had nobody. 18,000 for August was that, that and that wasn't even a full September, month of August. August, September, just August. Just August. So September's more than that. I will, I will, I will let you know when I get the bill. So we're at fifty thousand dollars already just on her. So the, the goal is tonight to to make a vote to figure out what we're going to do and then move ahead and do it. As I said in my my discussion with you, we need to find someone, a permanent person, ASAP. But why did you spend $50,000 in a consultant to get us to this point? How is that? To get a superintendent, we spent under $9,000 in a consultant. First is this all, five times more complicated? This is, this is a person who's working. It's not someone we've hired to, to do a, pro, a hiring process. This is someone who are boots on the ground doing the job that we had no one else to do. It's not, you're not comparing apples to apples. Is it higher than I thought? Yes. Did Dr. Carey and I have a conversation with Ms. Page and limit her hours per day? Yes. But we still accomplished a lot in the six weeks that she's been here. This is insane. You ought to be wearing sackcloth and ashes when you presented this. This is insane. Uh, if, if we go along with this food service director's position where the consultant has been spending all these hours trying to how much is it is it just a job for one person or is it going to be need more than one person to handle the, the direction of this whole food service program I think it's a one person job um, it's just that we've had nothing documented so it's like step it would be like me but we now have a, we have a procedural manual now right no information we will have one how much more is that going to cost? I'm going to be working on that. All right. I just want to make sure that we've, we've narrowed it down as to what we need, and it's going to work and work well, because we're the ones that are going to walk down the street and somebody's going to, you know, people do watch this program on TV, and they're going to be asking, you spent how much money? And uh, they're going to be asking. And I don't know what you're going to set for the salary of this 
food service director. I didn't do the math on it, but you know, it's going to be uh, substantial. All right, it's going to be a good job. Well, if I, can I just say something? Just clarification. Just a question that just came up. If I read this stuff correctly or heard you correctly. I think there was a comment that there's a seven thousand dollar increase for this estimated for this position over what we were currently paying. So I'm assuming that's including the old salary, and then because the hours are going to be not full time, etc. So there was an estimate that the <coughs> position itself is going to cost seven thousand dollars more. Correct. I'm not talking about consultant stuff or anything like that, but to your well, question but about I, but the I future. think it's probably I think David is probably going to be more than the seven thousand. Well, it may, if it is, then I think then maybe some criticism would be due at that time. But in terms of what's been presented, it's, you're saying it's a $7,000 increase. The salary we were paying, uh, how much did it cost us last year for the cafeteria director's salary at Frontier? I don't have that information with me right here at hand. But we also had to pay, pay, do the retirement buyback and everything else. So it was, I would say it was probably <laughs> close to $70,000. Yeah. And yeah. we were employing them for 260 work days I when really, there was no work in the summer. Yeah. We don't feed in the summer. <coughs> the only districts that hire food service directors for 260 day are urban schools who have summer feeding programs. So before my arrival, before Dr. Carey's arrival, this person was hired to work 260 days. I'm, I'm aware of that, but what I'm trying to get at is, is long range. Uh, is this thing going to work? And I want to make sure that if we go this way, it's going to work and it's going to work well. And it's going to take an awful lot of babysitting. Uh, I know it's a bad term, but somebody's going to have to stay right at it and what have you. And so it's either going to have to be you, Patty, or Lynn. Well, and, I, and, and to Mr. Sharp's point, I want to add, we're looking to add maybe $7,000, but we're asking for a more qualified person than we have. We don't have the expertise in the district. That's A, why we hired a consultant, and B, why we're looking to make it for all five schools so the nutritional culinary expertise that this person should have will be had. Okay. So we're getting more bang for our buck. Now, one other question, Patty. We paid for, to buy the retirement the sick time back. Now, that position was shared with the other towns? Two right? other towns, yes. Oh, <coughs> uh, we were we reimbursed for those costs? No, we were not. Frontier took those costs. Why wasn't it apportioned? I don't know, Bob, because the, because the other, would be, again, before my arrival and before Dr. Carey's arrival, it was set up that one school would pay this amount of money and the other school would pay <coughs> this amount of money and Frontier would pay the rest with no rhyme or reason to those set figures. <coughs> so even if we, if, if, if this does not pass for five towns, the three towns that are participating with the, with the original position are going to have to reconfigure how we're paying for it because there's no rhyme or reason as to why the, we have the setup we have. Well, I'm concerned long range about all the post-employment benefits, et cetera, et cetera. But, that, awesome. but that's gonna, we're going to be on the hook for that whether we hire a food service director for three schools or five schools. Frontier is only required for those that are in Frontier. Okay. You could put them on the payroll in the other towns for those part-time dollars. Frontier is on the hook for all central office employees' post-employment benefits. If those don't get apportioned to the towns. They should. They don't. They should. That's my point. And well, then, you know, we share all these positions. There's, okay, so it, there's no it, union it, agreement. That one does not exist. We've been to the state. We've been everywhere. One does not exist. So, so, so I'm just some following night, what so my some predecessor we, has done. we should probably take up the fact of how we're going to portion these costs going forward because uh, Frontier is in there paying all these costs. We wouldn't have this problem if we went K-12. Just want you to know. Or PK-6. Yes. And we would solve the problem, and it'd be an okay, awesome. Okay, Greg. Well, the discussion so far has been around costs, costs for consulting, costs for. My understanding is that, that this is also supposed to increase the income, mm -hmm. both by doing a better job with collection and also hopefully increase the participation. That's correct. So, if we look at these expenses as an investment, I think a good thing have an understanding as you start growing the numbers. What's the expected payback time 
where is the point of the calendar where if we'd been going the old way, you know, we would have sent forth on this anyway. And then that's why I'd like to you know, you put together for, for outcome. Well, as soon as I get some data for we just finished the month of September, um, and unfortunately this meeting was four business days after the end of the month. So we, I don't have any September data, but I will be bringing the September data and hopefully the October <coughs> data to the November meeting so that each school can see already if we have an increase in our participation. Um, don't forget, <coughs> what also has hurt us is the fact that um, they redid, the, the federal government redid the free and reduced lunch qualifications. So now you have to be economically disadvantaged, which is a totally different metric than what we did lose. So we're already behind the eight ball already because we don't have as many free and reduced as we did uh, prior. And again, our lunch prices, once the federal government comes out this month with their recommendations for FY19, we may be coming for price increases because we cannot have our, our full pay prices be lower than what the federal gives us for a free. So th those numbers are due out from the federal government this month. Uh, and again, um, we'll be looking at that and coming to you November, December for price changes for FY19. So if I could ask a couple of questions, Patty. Um, it, we're talking about a $7,000 position increase approximate. Have there been, and you've mentioned reductions in staffing, have there been savings in staffing costs as a result of those reductions? Yes, but again, until I get some comparative right. data, I can't tell you okay. what those savings were in the month of September. Okay, and then my, my second question deals with, um, I understand you know, the report, the summary. I'm looking at an organizational chart that has a food service director and team leaders in, in five locations. We present the present structure is what? It, it's the same except that we don't call the, the lead person a team leader. Okay. They're the they're the one that manages the everyday operations. They're the, the one that's in there prepping the food. They're making they're taking the inventories, they're doing they're making the production records. Mm -hmm. They're already doing the job, but they don't so they have more responsibility than someone else who's just doing the serving line. And so then we felt that there needed to be recognition for those additional responsibilities. Mm -hmm. so, so the structure already exists? Yes, it does. Just with We're different just going to call it something different. Okay. Well, except that two of the schools aren't on that structure because they don't report to anybody. No, I put right. all five schools, I put all five schools on. On this you did for the future, on this. right. But in terms of what We're we have now. Right. 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 Yeah, no, they're two So there'll be no standing. new hires. There'll just be an appointment of someone yeah, as yeah, the yeah. team but, leader. Mm -hmm. will, that, will, will that person, obviously, with more duties, uh, be get, getting a raise or a d different step or something like that? Again, that that's what we're going to be working on once we get the person on board to look at who's doing what, what job would be. and why is this person doing the same job in Waitley as they do in Conway, but they're getting paid less than in Conway. And I'm just using that as an example. It's not, yep. I, I'm just, right. you know, so that's what we want to do is like a position is a position is a position. It's not more valuable in Conway than it is in Waitley than it is in Deerfield than right. it is in Frontier. Based on the task. Correct. Gotcha. I hate to say, I'm going back to supervision. I. I fundamentally disagree with the idea that the person should, well, let me take it back. I've been to multiple school committee meetings where I was told that all staff now have performance evaluations. And so today I hear not all staff have performance evaluations. So I, um, I have an issue with that. The second thing I have an issue with is that I don't actually agree with the reporting structure. I think that if the principals want to report into Patty, that's fine with the, the fiscal report, but I feel like how do you maintain autonomy at the school level if you're reporting up to the central level? I like, I'm, I'm a, I like the idea of consolidating shared work tasks. That makes sense to me, fiscally and sort of organizationally. But I, I don't like the idea of the schools losing their individual, I know you say that they get to keep their individual identity and you know, I think that sounds good in theory, but I don't know that it actually is going to be executed in a practice by the way you've laid out the reporting structure. And, I, and, I, and honestly, I don't know that, um, I don't know, I just, I don't, it doesn't necessarily make sense to me that they report mm -hmm. all the way up to you, Patty, I'm sorry, I really feel like it's a different reporting structure for the schools to be independent, and I, and I really feel like, sure, the financial information should come to you and should come to you, obviously, you're in charge of all that stuff. 
but I don't know that there's the capacity to take on one more thing there. I, from the Waitley perspective of things, I've been on the school committee there for quite a few years. I got off it for a little bit and I'm back on there. Before I got off, we did hire somebody to come into our school to help with a deficit, and I'm talking back six, seven, eight years ago, and we were promised that that deficit would go down, and probably in the last seven years, we could probably pay one year what this director is going to make. It's really tough taking educational money to take care of our deficit in the lunchroom every single year. It's been like that as far back as I remember, and some years are worse than other, but they're seven to ten twelve thousand dollars every year with a little school of Waitley with two great lunch people in there it's been going on and you know if we can have somebody to come in to help us commodities doing it the right way maybe having the same menus we buy the right way you know it may take a year maybe two years to see a something in the red but boy it's tough taking seeing every year seeing that minus you know minus has something to do with people that are listening to us out there that haven't paid for their kids lunches i understand that but there's some of it some other ways too that's you know that we're losing money so i mean that's all i that's all i want to say i dr carrie wants to say something too. um when i when i came on a year ago there were no um we did not evaluate secretaries, assistants, custodians, lunch folks. Uh, people were just not being evaluated. And so starting this year, I couldn't walk in and start changing things, but as of July 1st, the custodians will be evaluated by their principal with the facilities director's input. Um, a secretary slash assistants are being, some of them were actually evaluated last year, but we have a, an instrument for the secretaries and the assistants, and we are definitely this year evaluating the, um, the food service people. Uh, and the reason why we evaluate is not so much to criticize or to say, you know, we're unhappy, but really to, to commend them on the hard work they're doing. These people work really hard. And, and when I go in there and I see them, and I've eaten lunch at every school, and they're really working hard. But without that documentation, year after year, you know, this person has served, she's done this, this, and this, it's, it's, not, it, it's not a way to run a district. Everyone needs to be evaluated. Clearly, I'm evaluated, and right on down, we're all evaluated, and that's the way it has to be. So, yes, it hadn't been done until my tenure, and this year, everyone's being evaluated. So that definitely is one. As far as the uh, autonomy in each school, they will maintain that. They will retain their autonomy. What we need is um, someone to help consistently supervise it and monitor what's happening in the different schools. Because what happens is when we have our audits done, we are, you know, this school is <coughs> doing great this year and then the next time they're not doing great the reporting's not okay we're reporting more more lunch served than we have money for um, things are not solid what we need is is someone that things are not consistent we need someone to come in and just just monitor what's happening not change the way they serve food or the way they um, their own special culture within their own building in the same way principals are there and they're not changing the culture of the building, they're working within it, hopefully. Um, we want these, the school lunch programs to have the autonomy and to you know, let our stars, we're leaders among leaders, to let our stars shine and, and show the, the great stuff they can do. Deerfield is a great example, they, they just shine. Uh, as far as uh, the oversight, it's needed. It's needed, I, I don't know how else to tell you that it is needed and reporting to um, there's always a chain of command so the reporting would come to the food service director and then that would come up to central office to patty to me so we we need to have that information but we also need oversight 
It's it's the way you run an organization. So, um, thanks, Bob. Um, so I, I don't think anyone is questioning whether we need data, whether we need um, uh, this information. I, I think that it's the way I feel anyway is adding another thing onto Patty's list is maybe not the the best thing to do. You already have a lot under your under your uh, your on your, under your hat on your plate. Um, what I'm thinking about is um, the leads uh, of each school um, reporting into their principals if the principals agree to that, because I know they also have a lot under their hats. Um, and then the principals meeting with the, with the director. And then last, so that we know what's happening, is there a committee of us, of of the joint committee that knows just, I mean, like Phil, like you said, when we when we went to look for our superintendent, there was a super a superintendent hire committee. Um, I'm not sure it's the best thing to have everything, all the data come to our entire committee. Maybe, and I would volunteer to be on that from Frontier. Um, so, in response to that, Mr. Mayor Pizzi, this would not add any responsibilities, any responsibilities to me. It actually alleviates the responsibilities for me because I don't have an effective food service director, so I can only look at numbers. Yeah. But I can't say to them, well, I can, but stop doing this, stop doing that. Well, it's been five years of stop doing this, stop doing this, and <laughs> nothing's happened because there's no direct supervision. And it has added responsibility for us as a committee, as the it's we're losing money all the time. So that's why I'm volunteering and bringing it to a committee perspective. So we are you talking about the hiring committee? Because we, uh, Dr. Carey and I already talked that it would be a committee to hire this new person, and it would probably be myself, um, the high school principal, Mr. Modesto, probably one of our. Um, elementary principals it would probably be one of our food service workers uh, and then we were looking maybe for a school committee and a community member uh, for the hiring committee I wasn't necessarily talking about the hiring committee I'm talking about more of an oversight how are things going type committee because we'll, we as as Patty indicated we'll be sending we'll be having these monthly reports if we have one person in charge of all the reporting, we'll have our hands on that information much more readily. La when I came on last year, this, the regional school committee directed me to do something about food service. When I came on and I met with the, princip the principals of the five schools, three of them came to me and said, our food service, there's, there's a problem. Um, we need to be addressing that. We would be remiss if we did not address this. And especially in light of the fact the Frontier Regional School Committee has asked me, as the, you know, as the superintendent has asked our, our central office to really look into this. We do not have the expertise. We need someone with the expertise. I can't say whether we should buy you know, sliced turkey versus whole turkey uh, from a private place, from the commodities, from how much. We're buying ice cream and it's $10 more if we buy right from the dairy than it is if we buy it from, from the collaborative. We need someone that has these expertise. And I, I don't know, we can't have salt, you know, all these nutrition laws and... Um, Our vegetables have to be certain colors every week. <laughs> so consequently, I, I just need to tell you that we were charged with this we did the best we could. It did cost money because we don't have the expertise. But we found that what we didn't know was costing us money in the long run. And now we know because we have that information up front. Uh, now if we don't do something proactive, then I guess I can go to sleep at night saying, I did, I did my job. I did my due diligence. I'm telling you what we need. And thank you. David, uh, just yeah, this whole conversation is making me hungry, and so um, I'd like to I'd like to move move along. But um, so I would just don't lose focus of the fact that what's been presented to us is an annual loss of one hundred seven thousand dollars district wide on the food service. Correct me if I'm misstating anything. That's about two teachers, you know, that we could be hiring if we didn't spend that money. Uh, and so, and you guys have 
you've made your best efforts to try to address that problem by uh, coming up with somebody. Uh, there's only so much micromanaging I think that we can do. I think we've all expressed our concerns about really needing data to making sure that this works and that this number, in fact, starts to go down, because if it doesn't, then it's a colossal failure again, and we need to address it. And so, if possible, I would sort of make a motion that we approve the food service director position as presented. For union. Is that a uh, union 38 motion? That's a, that's a, what do we have yes, a get it done. Is there, hold on. Hang on one second, Do I have a second? Second? I got a couple seconds, so good. Qu questions? Uh, okay. Before we approve that, it, uh, would, would we see a solid salary, or, or is this a range, or how do we, how are we going to move forward on like the, the cost of the position? It would not be in excess of 35. Depending on the qualifications of the person, it, would, it could go down to 30, uh, depending on the qualifications. Thank you. Doug, you're first. Thanks. Um, on that, to that, uh, is that, it says 210 days, is there a paid vacation that goes with that? Or it's, no. it's it would be 180 work days. Uh, there's, uh, according to the Frontier contract, there's 12 holidays, and then there would be eight days to open the program and eight days to close the program. Okay. So, no vacation. So they get holidays, but not? No vacation. No vacation. So if I could just, yeah, um, go ahead, Doug. I'm sorry, finish. Uh, um, I mean, I had a number of questions, actually. That I the timing for the, the hire, I've had my hand up for a while. Yeah. Oh, uh, so the timing. If, we, if it's approved tonight, we will get it advertised tomorrow. But uh, I, it, would, once expected? I make the uh, changes to the, um, the food service director description that Mr. Um, Decker brought to my attention. What's the expectation, though, like for how long? Till somebody's in place. I, to, to the point about the what we're paying right now, which is a mm -hmm. you know an extremely high rate for uh, uh, for you know our district. Not you know no uh, judgment on the consultants. Uh, you know, it's um, good money, but you know for our district and you know we all know the budget situation. This is a ton of money. It's, it's we're all, we're going to spend. You know, it's four times what we're looking you right. Know, right now. The hourly rate it we're looking to hire into. So. Yeah. So the timing on this is obviously of the essence in terms of how quick, how long is it going to take to have somebody in place? Okay. By November 1st. So we'd advertise for 10 days, set up the interviews, um, I didn't get the committee together, set up the post for 10 days, get the interview committee, and then the interview committee would then bring two finalists forward to Dr. Carey. Uh, and then hopefully, you know, well, it could be the second week in November, depending on how much notice the person needs to give. To their current employer relative to the pay still like is there are there cases out there where <coughs> districts have included some level of you know the compensation is connected to results I've worked in districts um, where principals were compensated based on performance metrics um, it, it, the, the, it's the not common. I mean, in I know in a lot of things, I'm not, not a fan of this, honestly, in a, in a lot of contexts where I think it's harder, there's less control in, over how things are, you know, over the uh, what's actually measured. Um, but in this case, uh, it's, it seems like, again, they're not going to be in control of every variable that will impact this, but they're, they would have a lot of impact. So it seems like a situation that it might. So like I said, performance-based contracts aren't popular in schools, but the districts that I've been in, they've been used mainly for principals. Um, and Bob, so, you got another question, Doug? Go ahead. Well, on the, to, to the, the, the um, oversight, which I think is you know very important point of this, but it does say in there on this, reports to director of the services and school principals. So what I sounded like you were saying earlier was the there was reporting on financials to you and operations to the school principals. Did I understand that correctly? So I, I want the, I, the, 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 the program operates in each building. So that makes the, the, the principals of the schools responsible for the programmatic um, piece of it. I, as director of business services, do the financial piece. <laughs> right. okay, I just want to make I don't want to clarify take, that because that's right. what I thought I heard. I don't want to take um, power out of the principal's hand saying yeah. that they can't talk to the, the food service director about what they want to see in their programs. 
the other thing I would love to hear, since the principles are here and we're talking about consolidating something that has been, you know, partially consolidated before, but partially not, is if any of the principles have concerns about this, um, about having a director, the director conclusion. Don't put anybody on the spot, like, you know. <laughs> but, you know, this, this crickets. Yeah. Not hearing anything. Sound of crickets. Uh, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't that frontier that's only going to save us? We're already. Yeah. yeah I mean, we already have the same plane that we were before. I thought it's easier to smaller schools. It would be positive or negative. Just because, you know, so there's not a cricket. It's just a bit more common. I, I think, um, just like a academically, each school has their own its own condition. Um, so we would want some economy at the local level to work with local farms, to farm to table initiatives. If our um, cafeteria workers um, are proud of certain meals that they make, we would want to have the ability to empower them to make those meals. And that's what we were talking about, each school keeping them. Yep. Definitely that we would champion that as well. Bob, um, you have a question? Yes. I was attempting to make a motion for Frontier, and it got directed off to the union, and then we went on more and more. What I'd like to see is the salary uh, be not to exceed $58,800, which is $280 a day for 210 days. If that's... 35, what you, 35 times yeah. 8 times 210, 58.8, yes. Yep. That's what we can Okay, and I would like that the cost be apportioned based upon the student population on 10-1. Okay, now this is conditioned on the four towns, school committees, also voting to share this position because I think they all have to have an individual vote in the four different school committees to approve <coughs> this shared thing because this is different than the hiring of a superintendent or a SPED director or a business manager. I think it actually belongs there. So one of the towns could veto it. So what I'm saying is if they do veto it, we're going to charge the charge this position based upon whatever the enrollment is October 1 in those respective uh, But why schools. is it different with the food service director than it is for our director of facilities or any of the other central office because staff? Because I don't... The superintendent Patty, be, Patty. We're not a K-12 or a K-6. Yeah, but we've already, we already we, have those are position. Those are things that already happened. You can ask counsel, but we have a lawyer sitting here, right? And the statute talks about hiring the superintendent, the nurse, et cetera, and the SPED director and the business manager. But they don't talk about, uh, you know, Frontier is different than the unions. I'm saying the superintendent's a union. What you're trying to do is you, I don't believe you can bind this meeting, I don't think here, can bind the individual towns into buying into this program. If they don't like it, they can say, we don't like it. They'd be foolish because it's probably a good program. But I'm just saying, I want, I want the cost to be spelled out, and I want to make sure we review it. And if Bill wants to go on the committee, that's fine, as long as he pays attention and doesn't give away the store like he did in the teacher contract. Oh, I was there too, so. Yeah. Oh, we can blame you too. No, 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 no. Yeah. Judy. Can I hear what plan B is? So if we get, so we've spent $18,000 for August, let's say you capped and it's at 15,000 for September and October, and we get two weeks into the middle of November, we're approximately half the cost for the consult, half the cost of the loss for three months of the consultant. So if we don't get a good hire, what happens next? If we get the vote to share it? No. Nope. What happens next? So if we all vote to share it. Mm -hmm. If you all vote to share it, we get the new hire, we get them on board, and we move forward. No, nope. if we all vote to share it, we go out to hire, we don't get somebody that we want. What's next? Okay, so what you're what you're saying is if we don't find a viable candidate, yeah. who wants the job? Um, do you give it to somebody that's already in the schools and is already one of the team leaders? We want the school. Or do you, do you keep want the, the consultant on for $125? No, absolutely no, not. We're no. done with the consultant. We uh, Sorry. and we're Sorry. encouraging Sorry. we're encouraging anyone to apply. People in the schools, people that are already working in in the district. 
we want people to apply. Yes. Um, yep. Floor. Floor. Could I just say one comment that there was an additional piece that you invested in at the beginning of the year, and that was buying point of sale units for all of the other schools. Those machines are just a computer. They don't come ready to plug in and start taking transactions. There's a significant amount of work involved in programming those machines. You can hire a company, be able to come out to your site and do it. I don't know exactly what the cost of doing that would be, but it just so happened that that's an area in which I have vast, past experience. So part of what we got from having me come on board was all three of those units were programmed and people trained and supported to start the school year. And I continue to tweak the system and to help and train people. So if you got those sort of sale machines up and running for the first day of school from the time you purchased them, which would have been very costly <coughs> to hire you know, so left to come to it. There was no one here who would have been able to take care of that. So just a little piece that was a one-shot deal. That won't happen again. Everybody has a machine. They're all working well. We get great reports out of it. We can look and see how many kids purchased each of the items on the menu because those things are running separately. How many bought the whole meal? How many bought an a la carte sandwich or a piece of pizza? We get great, great information out of those machines. It was a wonderful investment for all of you have made. But there was more to it than just taking the machine out of the box and plugging it in and start doing transactions. And I did take quite a bit of time getting those up and running and continue to take time to support the people who get that trained and comfortable. And even learning to run some of the reports as I've worked with principals on running reports. And more time will be spent looking at the analysis of what our sales were in September as we move forward. So it was an investment that you want to make again as part of this project. And that contributed to the high cost of having the consultant in here who was bringing those machines online. And uh, which eventually, again, is an investment because eventually we will save money because we'll have weekly reports so, yeah. on who owes and who doesn't owe and, and how. What's, what's being bought and what's not being bought. So is experience with that point of sale purchase system part of the job requirements? Yeah, I don't see it listed. I see technology, but I don't see the actual software system listed. They could be used. Yeah. Okay. I can change that to preferably mix yeah. plus Judy. No, I was just asking. Ashley? A huge, a huge component, from my understanding, from the Meals Plus was preparing for the to pay online, mm -hmm. which hasn't been mm -hmm. up and running yet. Do we have like a time frame on when that is going to happen or for our next meeting? Go ahead, Doctor. Uh, we, what we need to do again is to work with the four towns. And so I meet regularly with the four town administrators. We need to come up with a way that we can do, allow the parents to pay without paying an ATM fee. So if you go to an ATM that's not your bank, you pay $3 for each time you use it. There is a fee right now to use, uh, to, to be able to put money on the account. We need to make that more consumer friendly, no fees. We need to, and the, each town has their own different way of collecting money, their own different Banks. Uh, banks and again there is an economy of scale that we're missing because we're four separate schools we need to actually see if we can't tighten that up if we can get the towns to all pick one bank for our lunch services and then we would pass on that savings to our to our families I just feel like I voted on the Meals Plus program for that whole encompassing mm -hmm. thing and that maybe it should have been done before we went to this step. And I also just want to point out that I, this is a well-written job description. I just, to me, it looks like an impossible path to find somebody that meets every single qualification on here. I think it's going to be either, it's going to just point to either hiring two different people or, I mean, you couldn't pay me enough to do this job. <laughs> this, is, this is an incredible thing that you're asking one person to do, manage five schools with five different ways of doing things Actually, with I've people that have been there for 20 13 years. Schools. I've been in districts with 13 schools and we had one food service director. All right. The, and I think I need to point out that a lot of these, these standards that we're expecting our new food ser service director to have, our consultant has already laid the foundation, has already laid the groundwork. So these procedures and practices are in place because we've invested the money in getting Flory to do this for us. We had nothing. We had nothing written down. We, we had nothing to go on. Now all this stuff is written down. So the person coming in would just... Have a nervous breakdown. Um, 
these I'm not saying that nothing needs to be done. I'm just saying that this list right. is. Well, we went, the, the, the food service director description we had was very skeletal. So yes, maybe I went too far in the other direction. And, I, and maybe I can pull some of it in. But I mean, anybody that's in food service, they know this is what, this is what DESE requires. These are the areas, so I highlighted each one. I mean, I could condense this, absolutely. But the, I spelled out each and then every individual task that we get rated on by DESE. So we were almost, so our job descriptions have not been updated in a million years, okay? So what I'm trying to do is what I've done in other districts. You line up the job description to what they're gonna be evaluated on. So there's no surprises when the evaluation comes because it was in the job description that it was expected. And that's what most companies do. You line up your job description to, e to equal the evaluation tool. I know the duty says required. Just real quickly, you know, based on that comment, <coughs> are we shooting, is that, that $50,000, $58,000 a year realistic? Because again, I worry that we'll get to, you know, November, halfway through November, and we, we just haven't gotten anybody. If this is too, you know, I don't really know, but is it too strict? Is it, you know, I think it's, like you said, you have to follow these guidelines it's the right you know it's the right move going forward uh, to consolidate and get this thing organized um so have we, that what and we say but do, i'm just worried are we right. are we shooting too low for the tasks we're asking for or you the, the salary good? one yeah the, to me the salary feels good and what dr carey and i did was um i always go east yeah see what's going because the east pays more than the western mass yeah and i think compared to what the east is paying this is a fairly good salary just curious, yeah, so I'm glad you did that. I was just curious, had we looked around, what other people look at Do we have any other questions or comments? Um, I, at least, we, we have a motion at this point in time with the union. I, I'd like to suggest we, um, we work on it just a little bit because it, I think, David, you, you made a motion to approve the food service director position as essentially as presented. Um, I think we might want to put a salary cap of 588 on it and I think we would want might want to have language to determine whether this is appropriately taken at the Union 38 level or it needs to be at the individual town level I mean we can take the vote we'll have a sense of how the uh, the joint committee feels but then we need to have council's opinion whether it can be voted at the Union 38 level I mean, what's the purpose of the Union Day Joint Committee? If we can't? I, I, I'm well, not arguing with you, David. Okay. Right. Just, we've had a procedural okay. question raised. Okay. I, I sure. think it would be behoove us to, to get Council's opinion on it. I'm, I'm not. I'm in full agreement. Sure. It's easier to do this type of a conversation in, yeah. as a Joint Committee yeah. and get a sense as how how the um, the four towns feel rather than have to go and present it four different times. So I appreciate it having brought in this manner, but we've had a procedural question raised whether sure. it can be can be done in this manner. So I, I would just like to make a, a suggestion the motion read to approve the food service director position as um, presented, or I'm sorry, as recommended by administration with a salary range not to exceed 58,800 subject to um, council's uh, are you suggesting that uh, if someone comes back, we're going to have to post this to the next monthly meeting for all of the elementary schools? If procedurally, as opposed to having us all take votes tonight in our individual meetings, votes tonight in it, it, because it wasn't recently anticipated, right. so they can bring it up tonight. Was not or was? It was not anticipated. It was not anticipated. Oh, so it's okay. Legitimate. To yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we could legitimately vote them tonight. Um, we're calling um, council now. Okay. We we're, we really we really. And then I, the longer we wait, the more I we're spending on the consultant. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And I just I'm just prefer not to have it that town administrators or boards of selectmen might step in and say this vote was not properly sure. taken. So. <laughs> Good to be cautious. Then just a well, point of, the point of procedural clarification. Hold on, hold on, Bob. Yeah. A, four, a, four, a, four, a 
while you're while you're asking the question to the council, you should just wh whether Union Thirty Eight had sufficient notice for this vote. Um, to, is, if if you're going to be going that way, if you're, if you're asking a procedural questions, mm -hmm. the, the, the towns did, the towns all did, yeah. and Frontier did. Right. But whether Union Thirty Eight, wh whether you can just take a vote without. And each of the uh, town, uh, each of the other, the five school districts, we met in September and we told them, we laid it all out and we said we're looking for a vote in October that would, for a one food service director. We spoke about what we were doing, what our plans were, what we were asking, and as we notified every school committee in September that this is what we wanted that this is what we needed to do now because we need a permanent person he wasn't available and so we'll, I'm take a provisional so, so you can take a provisional book uh, vote well, just like a, just a game of golf the union level and then we can vote in the individual So we're, so we're very concerned about the timeline. Well, so <clears throat> my suggestion is we'll take the vote on the motion to approve right. food service director position as recommended with a salary range not to exceed $58,800 per contract year, mm -hmm. period, with the understanding that we'll take a similar vote at each individual committee meeting. And we'll check with... So my question would just be, I guess... To, I mean, again, I hate to hamstring. If somebody, the greatest candidate comes in and wants 59.5, you know, I hate to hamstring. So I don't know why we're feeling the need to put that salary level in. We know the administration has an idea of what they want to spend and don't want to spend too much. So I just feel again that we're getting too uh, micromanaging their job. Not to mention telling people who want the job if they're paying attention. You so you prefer, ask for this amount, you're going to get so it. So you prefer not to. I prefer not to motion. put the stuff in about salary into our motion. Okay. So we have a motion to approve food service director position as recommended. Trevor seconded, right? Trevor seconded. Mm -hmm. yeah, we had, what is it? Mark Gregory seconded. Yeah. Gregory seconded. Yeah. Okay. okay. Do we have any further discussion in the union? 38. Excuse me. What's that? I said please don't. <laughs> All those in favor? <coughs> All those opposed? I can't count. Oh. Just call it unanimous. Yeah, I didn't see. Oh, oh no, one abstention? No, yeah. Or Phil? Okay. Is that Phil an can't. abstention? Phil's, Phil's not, not a vote. I don't remember who's not a voting member. Only a frontier, okay. Phil. I'll hold my no vote to the next vote. <laughs> <laughs> so it was unanimous. That would be 11 0. I move uh, that we establish the shared uh, uh, cafeteria director's position. Uh, to be apportioned based upon the student population enrollment of October 1 in each year and for the current year going forward, uh, which was the other day, at 58,800, not to exceed 58,800, and that, uh, that that would be the cost. And if there was any further discussion as to whether or not that's not sufficient uh, after interviews and what have you, we could have a special meeting of the the board to would to listen to whatever their proposals are. We just leave the price out, Bob. We we all right. Well, I'll leave the motions. Okay, so I'll remove it. But if you pay more than fifty eight hundred dollars, I'm not going to fifty eight hundred fifty eight thousand. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to support it going forward. If you come in and say you're paying somebody seventy thousand, I'm not going to support it. Oh, I think you're going to see people expecting it. So we have a motion to make. So we from Frontier, we have Bob making a motion. We need to What was the motion? It seemed kind of incoherent. Well, I took off the uh, the dollars because we were writing blank checks these okay, days. Okay, so what was the motion? <laughs> that we agree to share the position with the other four towns and that the cost be apportioned uh, based upon the October 1 enrollment. With the four towns. With the four towns. So don't the four towns vote on that? This is a frontier motion. It's a frontier vote. This is a frontier motion. So what happens if one of the towns votes no? 
Well, they then, didn't. Then it goes down to, well, that's my what point. What happens if they could. 15 minutes from now, one of the towns votes no, like Conway? But they just voted yes. No, the union for the eight votes. Union for 38 the voting voted. members 38 voted yes. Voted well, there's only three here, and two out of the three voted for it. So I think the same thing would happen in the school. Two out of the three, members. but there are two members that aren't here, Penny. I understand that. We're going to have the meeting in 15 minutes. So, let's Oh, right. Clear as mud. We're meeting after. So we have a motion. Can I second? Yes. 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 Any other discussion from Frontier? All in favor? Mr. Decker, you're a yes. Mr. Fosno, were you a yes? Mr. Fosno, were you a yes? Yes, I was a yes. Uh, Mr. Mirapizzi? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Raymond? Yes. Oh, you're a full one. Uh, uh, Ms. Pierce, you were a no? Correct. <coughs> Ms. Roberts is not present. Mr. McFarland is not present. Uh, Mr. Smith is not present. Mr. Halla? Yes. It passes 4.94 to 2.05. So, okay. Thank you very much. <coughs> the next item on the agenda would be. Um, Superintendent's goals. Okay. I hope everyone's in a good mood. We need to stand up. We need to cross our midline. So you take your hands like this and you cross your midline, which helps your brain open up, get some fresh air. I know my brain's been open since 5 15 well, this morning. So I'd like everyone to be in a good mood. I did send these, um, I sent these out last night. I can send them around again. These are the, oh, I need one man. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Stop. So these are my goals for 2017-2018. And again, just like last year, these goals were are not specifically made by me. They're not my dream come true. These goals were made with a team and a team of excellent administrators that I work with. I work with the finest administrators around. Uh, they're very supportive and we try to work together as one unit moving forward with one voice and while keeping our individual personalities at each of our schools, which we do, each of our schools are entirely different. But we have some overarching uh, goals together that I work with my team and the question is how do we define success what are our children doing in their classrooms I go to classrooms I see small groups I see technology playing an ever-increasing part in the learning uh, which leads to personalized learning <coughs> opportunities I see students engaged in every single classroom I visit they're not just sitting there being having an adult impart wisdom to them. They're, they're actually taking part in constructing their own learning and their own knowledge. This, more than anything, is what will allow our students the opportunity to excel. They will learn, they will become better learners, they will become more knowledgeable, they will become better problem solvers because we give them a chance to work on their own problems in activity based learning. We let them work in groups, we let them learn from <coughs> one another, some are teaching each other, some are learning from their peers. What we're doing here with differentiation in this district is, I would say to you, it's, it's, we're ahead of the curve. There's not a whole lot of traditional teaching going on. We're engaging in research based best practices. My first my first goal is 
again, and I'm saying 100% of our teachers will be able to demonstrate evidence of meeting the needs of our diverse learners. Our learners all come to us with a different profile, the same way we're sitting around the table with a different set of backgrounds, different profiles, different ways we learn. We want to be able to reach our children where they are. I see this happening. I walk around the administrators, I walk with the administrators, the formal observations and evaluations that we give our teachers, and learning lots that we record. So what we have is a group of administrators going to each different school and recording what they're seeing. And then we look at that data at our retreat, our administrator retreat, and we're looking for student achievement, student engagement, student love of learning. I see kids engaged in everything. I see them going around happy. I see groups where they're working together industriously. Um, we have some great things going on. Just a real quick case in point, in Sunderland we have what we call, what is called Science Buddies. It's a program that's being piloted uh, where the sixth graders go into the kindergarten class and they work on problems. They solve engineering problems. We have a great, great collaboration with the Hitchcock Center uh, for science. We have the most active and incredibly enthusiastic elementary coordinator for curriculum who is in there doing all this with all the different schools, supporting teachers in all different ways because again teachers have different profiles and what they what their passions are. In the high school we have our secondary coordinator working with the teachers in math and bringing newest and the most recent learning to those teachers and they're growing and learning and so we are really on the cutting edge but I would say to you we started the differentiation the year before I came in 2016 last year we enhanced it more through PD and we continue to enhance it with collaboration among the grade levels uh, at the department levels in the high school. We have a lot of technology training for personalized learning. And so this is something that we want to continue. It's, it's a continuous growth that we're looking at. Um, my goal for number two is the Special Education Task Force. By 2018, the Special Education Task Force will provide a clearly articulated vision and goals for increasing our students' access to the curriculum. We have, um, our goal is to decrease the impact of students' disabilities while increasing participation in their natural environment to enhance the notion that both regular and special ed teachers form one system of support for, for all children. So no longer is it this child is special ed, they leave the room, they go to the special ed teacher and they take care of that curriculum and I work with these kids. It is a collaborative classroom, an inclusive classroom, and we're trying to do team teaching. And what we need to do is um, work on developing our true collaborative approach to professional practice. What is happening with the special ed task force? They're doing a, uh, an evaluation of the program we have now and an improvement plan of district-wide practices and procedures. This is going to be an ongoing learning plan for the special ed and the regular ed collaboration in the district. What we wanted to do is tighten that up to see and make sure that we are all working together to form one, one line of support for these kids. Uh, family and community engagement. We talk about communication, outreach. One of the things that I was asked last year on my evaluation was to increase communication. So the district under the superintendent's direction will continue to develop communication systems within and across the school district and within the greater community as measured by bi-weekly newsletters. I send newsletters to the school committee, not about issues, not about things that we need to be discussed in open meeting, but this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. This is what I'm doing. 
um, you look at the food director and all the things that they're responsible for, and then you think, oh, what is the superintendent of five districts responsible for? What is the superintendent doing? And how many th things and issues and things that I'm dealing with. Uh, so I like to keep you informed on my comings and goings and the great stuff I'm seeing. Um, monthly messages to families. I have been writing superintendent messages each month, putting it on the website. Now I'm going to be sending those same messages home to the families so they can get it directly in their own mailbox, their own email box. Um, uh, let's see, monthly messages to families. Uh, monthly and bi-monthly meetings with the four town administrators. I'm working with the four town administrators. We're working closely. Right now we're working on some insurance stuff, these changes that are coming with the uh, Ham Hampshire County Insurance Trust. Uh, we talk about, um, uh, well, we're doing a bond for Frontier Regional. I invited them in. We spoke about what the bond will be, the bond proposal. We're planning for the October 24th meeting. So we're doing a lot of collaboration and working together uh, with the towns. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good relationship. Uh, I attend select committee meetings more often in the spring. I've been to Waitley in the, in the summer and the fall. Um, and I'm, the goal is at least two articles about our school will be published in the local newspapers monthly. So we keep, I sent about three to four ideas to uh, Greenfield Recorder uh, just this week. So hopefully that'll work. So we're, we're working hard on outreach. And then uh, professional practice, my uh, training, uh, the superintendent, I have done my, uh, Oh, some suggestions for outreach that um, the team came up with, my administrative team, when we talk about this, um, a video tour of the new central offices, posting a slideshow of a day in the life of Frontier Region, Regional and the Union 38 schools on our website, uh, what makes us great, going around interviewing students, what makes us great, what, what makes us the place to be, um, and a screen ca cast of our standards-based assessment so that parents can really understand what, the, what our new report cards are all about. Professional uh, practice, uh, by June 2018, the superintendent will have completed her second year as a member of the new superintendent induction program cohort seven, as evidenced by successful completion of all assignments. Last year, I completed uh, everything that I was assigned to do. I, got, I went to all the meetings and this year I will continue that. It's uh, last year was eight meetings and eight hours a month coaching. This year it's like four meetings or five meetings and four, four hours a month of coaching. So I'm getting much more advanced in my career. Uh, and then also too, I participate in monthly collaborative meetings with the regional superintendents. Uh, Franklin Superintendents Group, Connecticut River Valley Superintendents Roundtable. I attend um, trainings. I'm going to Western Massachusetts uh, Safety, Western Massachusetts uh, reunification training uh, at the end of the month because stuff keeps changing. The every catastrophe we have every horrible incident we have we learn more about protecting ourselves in the event of these catastrophic uh, horrific situations so those are my goals for this coming year it's essentially uh, continuing to work with my team they're doing a great job and we're actually doing some wonderful things and I'm pleased to be here. So, Phil, first. Um, I actually did go to that MCAS last time. I went to the superintendent goals workshop. <laughs> um, <Good>. And, <clears throat> and, and uh, there was a few things in there that I just wanted to share with you but did, about doing goals that, this, that the school committee during the year can sort of be looking over your shoulder, metaphorically speaking, and be able to see that there's progress going on in them. That, uh, um, and so 
there's a bunch, you know, some, some of the, like, uh, 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 goal number two, uh, special education task force will provide a vision. That seems like it's a special education task force goal. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't tell us anything uh, that, yeah, necessarily about your direct role. The instructional practice seems like that that's a teacher's uh, edu the differentiation, that that's all what they're doing. It's, again, it's not necessarily you. I get that the outreach, that's you. And that's that would fit under the you know we could we can see that stuff is that's mm -hmm. and the professional practice as far I mean I understand that the, that uh, NSIP cohort that everybody no I mean but there's no like failing grade if you have a pulse they you, you pass that <laughs> workshop it's not quite that easy but I mean <laughs> but I mean I, so so I don't know that that tells it you know what what I'd like to see is a commitment to increase or to to attempt to increase enrollment at every school um, a, a, a commitment to go to every uh, annual town meeting and to speak coherently and intelligently and passionately at those meetings um, uh, and but that's what's important to me but in general things that you can sort of see that you're doing work better as goals than sort of things that are hidden in the nebulous administrative cloud. Damien? I, I want to kind of bounce off what Phil said too. I, you know, I mean, some of the goals on here are admirable and I'm glad you talked to the, you know, your administration about them. But one of the biggest glaring issues I see on here, and it became very apparent during the uh, discussion about the uh, the food service director is there's nothing on here about finance or budget and I, I mean if I'm not mistaken one of the biggest primary jobs of the superintendent is budgets and the budget process and the budgets are getting tighter and tighter every single year Sunderland didn't pass their budget last year you know as a whole school we did pass it uh, we're talking about a three million dollar bond um, and it would just be nice to see a goal mm -hmm. in here on that whole process. And, and, and student enrollment is one of them. As it goes down, that affects our budget. I know what you're saying. I can tell you that we do have school choice, although Deerfield doesn't accept school choice anymore. We have other <coughs> schools that have school choice. Um, we have quite a bit of school choice in the high school. In fact, we, we have enough school choice in the high school. The uh, smaller schools, I think, you know, they're, they have their, their limits of school choice. We talk each year about opening up slots, and those slots are open and people come. I don't know, um, short of having a PR person, I don't know how to go out and get kids to come here. I, I would love to have someone tell me how to do that. I could advertise. I could put advertisements in the paper. Um, I don't know how many school, how many slots we had in each school last year, but it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, ten maybe ten. I think there was ten in Waitley. I don't know how many we had in Sunderland. Maybe ten. I don't know how to go out and get more kids to come. We are well known as a place to go for school choice. I don't know how to, as far as declining enrollment, that is Western Massachusetts. That is every district in Western Massachusetts. I, I honestly don't know how to fix that. You would probably need a PR person to, to figure out how to fix that. As far as the budget, I am involved in every step of the way. I mean, that to me goes without saying. I've already, uh, met with the the four town administrators. We've already they've, I've invited the selectmen, the fine the finance committees. We've already laid the groundwork for this October 24th meeting on the 3.5 million uh, bond that we're hoping to you know propose that we're hoping that we'll get permission and that the, the voters will vote to improve things like this in the high school. Um, I have gone to all the meetings. I'm very active in, in fighting for what we need. I was very vocal in Sunderland. I don't know if you were there. I don't know, you know if you were there, but I was very vocal in the Sunderland town meeting when they had so many concerns. 
I've also talked with chairs of different school committees saying, you know, there's ways, yes, there's ways we can cut. Deerfield, we, I promoted cutting some money because I knew that with the shortage in school choice this year, we would be looking at a harder time. And it was difficult because none of the schools want to cut any money out of their budget. I'm not saying you're not doing that. It would just be nice to see it as one of the listed goals, not to take out any of these other goals, but just yeah. as a goal that, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, yeah, and as far as the special ed task force, that is happening under my guidance, and these people are meeting, and it is something that uh, will have budget implications, because we need to figure out where we're spending our special ed dollars, because special ed is a big part of our budgets. So yes, it's all related, and I could be more clear. Last year I had eight goals, and I felt I met them all very well, and um, I didn't get that sense from the school committee that they were as um, impressed with the hard work I did. So I thought this year I'm gonna keep it simple. I worked with my coach on these former superintendent, I worked on these with my coach, and um, actually I worked with another superintendent from an, um, an Eastern Massachusetts school district, and we kind of came up with them together, and I, uh, I'm trying to give everyone what they want, and I'm really working hard at it. Judy, you're first, if you still. Okay. <laughs> Elaine. Well, I was just going to add to that special education that's attending to that would directly impact the budget in terms of keeping kids in district, producing out of district placements, bringing kids from other districts into the program in our district, you know, that we offer Frontier some really amazing special education programs, so that does directly impact the budget. I also think that you are increased communication this year as far as I know this year. You know, I do you know, challenge everybody here to read everything that Lynn sends out on a regular basis because if you did read what she writes on a regular basis, she'd be very aware <coughs> of all the things that she's doing on a regular basis. But sadly, I think sometimes people see those things and don't either skim them or don't thoroughly go through I, I did get some uh, recommendations this week, maybe using bullets and uh, less information, more white space, and I agree. Why don't you just text it all to us? <laughs> <laughs> or Facebook, okay. Yeah. Emojis. Trevor? There you go. Well, Trevor, I mean, is there an opportunity to, um, to amend the goals to add? I mean, this bond is huge. It if is. You, if you can, you know, that would be a goal for me, is if you can, if you can get this passed by all four towns, mm -hmm. So it's a Hercules effort. I mean, this is, there's a lot on these, uh, I know, I, I, I wasn't aware we weren't gonna discuss this at all today, and I know we have the selective meeting and later town administrators finance committee meeting on it. And I know Frontier probably has already discussed it, but as a union, we need to um, just, if, if you can, if you can get this passed, that's a major goal. Um, I just, we need to kind of break this out a bit more and narratively and, and talk about what's more um, safety, you know, instead of a, a punch list and just, right. you know, a dollar number that's astronomical for the towns that are looking at $30 million sewer, $8 million library, senior center needs to get done. There's major expense going on in the town and then to get, get you know, to get a, hey, $3 million, you know, hello uh, for, for the school. And I'm not saying none of it needs to be done, or I, I would just, more of a narrative of, uh, and, and this will be a discussion, I'm sure, at, at, at the August 24th meeting, but if that, this is such a major part, uh, a major function of your duties this year that I would certainly amend your goal for it if you have a spot to put it on, that if you can pull this off, um, that's a huge task. and. Uh, you know, I would think you'd want credit for that. It's, it's, going, to be a hard, it's going to be a hard role. It's so. hard because I am looking for credit, yeah. but I not, mostly not I'm looking for respect uh, for the, the complexity of this job. Of and I'm looking at my predecessors and what they were required to do versus what I'm being required to do, and I'm starting to wonder. Yeah. 
So I just think it's a huge, it's a huge task, and it, you know, I think it, it's going to be a big job to do. And I just think it's a big, and, and not that you won't do it, or, but I just think in here we could have that you know, as part of a budget. Katie, you're next. Um, I just I did want to echo da Damien's comments about the, the superintendent's job is to steward the budget and to steward the finances of the schools and I don't know about other towns but Waitley's getting a lot more pressure we are the biggest expense of the whole town to really be more clear about what's the value that we're getting for this money that we're spending and I, I would push back and say there are things we can be doing to make the schools better and to attract more people to move to these towns to send their children to these schools and I think we should be thinking about that and I don't put that all on you but I think that the superintendent has to be the leader that Karen carries that message for us um, and so for better for worse that is the job it's a very hard job I'll give you that um, but I guess I would like to see a goal that sort of puts a stake in the ground about to try to get to people to move to the towns and come to our well schools. no I mean you, we can't hold you responsible for that but for in, for trying to put together budgets and telling a story that helps share the value of what is so great about these schools and how do we try and attract more people um, by virtue of that and I, I can't wordsmith it here in this minute and maybe we take a break and come back to it for another meeting because I know some of us would like to get home. But. Well, I, I, I guess I'm, I feel like we're putting things on the superintendent that are also all of our jobs. Yes. You know, it's all of our jobs to manage the budgets and to uh, market our schools. And I agree, Lynn should be a leader of those things, but it's not Lynn to pass a $3 million um, budget item. You know, that's all of us actively getting out in our communities and saying how important it is. And it's all of us who should be marketing our schools. It's all of us who should try to be getting people to move town, not just the superintendent. We've selected the superintendent to sort of be the leader, and she is the educational leader. She's not just the budget leader, and many of us know, after sitting here year after year after year, how much we don't have control over our budgets because of costs in the budget that we have no control over. And then when you go to cut things out of the budget, nobody wants that thing cut or this thing cut or to make the real hard sacrifices that you know that people need to make if they're gonna listen to the towns and control these costs. Lynn has some very good ideas about how to cut budgets and nobody really wants to talk about those things. You know, so if you're gonna engender her to really go after that, you may not want to hear the results because her and I have had budget talks and how we could make trimmings down, but people won't have jobs. Class sizes will be bigger. And when you do those things, you then negatively impact your school and your growth because as soon as people hear oh there are 26 kids in that class people don't want to move to your district they'll move to Williamsburg or they'll move to you know somewhere else so I mean I just think you you guys are being a little um, I don't know I, I agree with a financial maybe general goal but I also thought that's what all of our jobs were you know so. And it's also the cheerleader for us as well. I mean, she's the one. Absolutely. That's, so that's why, why I said it should be, you know, just be one part of that. communicate on a regular basis about all the things she's doing and about the great things. Every time she sends something out about all the great things that are going on at Conway Grammar School or Waitley Elementary School or this, you know, those are the kind of things that she should be doing. Of course. Attending these things herself, being a present, presence, letting other people know these, these things are going on. You know, I mean, that is, you know, that we, you know, we talked about when we were hiring a superintendent, how crazy it is to have, you know, how many school committee meetings, you know, every month, all year, never mind all the other things you do. It's like, who would want to do that job? But I'm just saying, I feel a little bit like we're saying, here, Lynn, you do it. And I'm like, that's well, of all of not. our job that as yeah, representatives I and school committee members is to, you know, do this also <laughs> I, I agree with you completely on everything you said I just felt like to not mention that that part of that job in the goals 
to not, you know, to just to not have that as a bullet point to go through where all these are important. And I read every one of the emails, very involved in what she does. And well, I bet you're the minority. Well, maybe, but I, I just I think um, it, it is such a large, you know, part in, in being this one year, it's, it's, it's a huge task to get through. And I'm not laying it all at her feet at all, but I just think, you know, if you're gonna, you know, some of this stuff we can't see, we're not here all the time, but that's one item we could see that, you know, how well she, you know, went to those meetings and did that kind of stuff. That's something she could get, I don't know, I mean, take all I mean, credit for it. I mean, laying a little credit. bit of the blame on the Sunderland and the lack of override on Linda. And to yeah, me, I that, not, that was the people in the town. Yeah, that of was, course. You can't. You know, the school committee that wasn't out knocking on doors and saying how of important course. this is. Yeah. That wasn't the, the new superintendent that just arrived to this problem. Of you course. know, I mean, that. That to me laid more firmly on, you know, that was not on the superintendent's feet up there. Bob, and then Mary, and then we'll see. Okay. Yes, unless somebody wants to add to the goals, I think we ought to approve the goals. Bob is making a motion for Frontier. Do we have a second for goals for Frontier? Approve the goals. Um, well, we just were wondering, is it the discussion that's having, and, and Len, I want you to know, is I think we're talking about improvement, but is our goal of the discussion to improve the, what's written here? Or, because there's a lot that's going on. I mean, it's before I second, and I don't think this isn't a, this isn't a review of her performance. Of course, this is a review of what's the establishment of the goal is what it is. Yeah. Unless somebody wants to add to it, we ought to I've looked at my predecessor's goals, and again, I've looked at other goals, and I've worked with superintendents from other, I've worked with my own team. These are the goals, but I do, you're right, I do need to take more of um, a handle on the budgets and those decisions. I need to know more about where the money's coming, where the money's going, and I do need to know overall. I have asked some really tough questions since I got here. People are becoming a little defensive. They're, you know, this is what we do, this is how we do it, we've always done it this way. I'm getting a lot of status quo talk. Yep. I'm working within that. I don't worry, I'm just trying to learn and understand. I'm just trying to ask questions. But any time you look at money being wasted or trying to improve, such as this food service, it's hard. People come after you. I we did a little bit of cutting in Deerfield last year. There were people that were very upset. I mean, this much cut. Well, you were there. This much cutting, and it was like, does anybody know how the teachers feel when you make cuts like that? Well, you know, we are overstaffed. There's no doubt about it. I've come from where we <coughs> bare bones, but we also have a standard here that we've always had. To come in in one year and say, you know, really, we don't need to be doing that. I can tell anyone in my office, I can pull out papers, I can pull out data, I can say, but you're talking about a situation where this has gone on for years and years and years. And yes, we need to tighten up and get into the 21st century, but how fast can you go? And how can you, you know, you have to move slow to move fast. I know what's going on with the money. I know exactly where we are overstaffed, where we're using too much money, where we're paying too many stipends, where we're doing too many. Our, our CBAs are extraordinarily generous. But these things were done before I got here. Sure. I'm trying to take and right the ship, but you can't do it if everyone's going to hate your guts at the end of the day and then I'm a target, and then they're going to school committee, and she's no good, she thinks that we can do without, she thinks we can do without. So, I am taking a go slow to go fast, I do look at the budget, I do need to get my hands more wrapped around what's going on. And I, I only say this because I learned from you in that process, so if it's there, you know, when we're out there, we're dealing with those issues, I get to hear that stuff, and I get to learn if it's not on the goal, you know, we, we bypass. I mean, we have conversations and stuff, and I deal with budgets, yeah. but it's a, it's an area where we all learn when we have those conversations. And that's the only. And again, I have to be very careful because it's a it's a position where 
I need to help people feel okay. I need to make people feel safe. Um, again, we're talking about jobs, we're talking about the needs, but we're also talking about things like this. I mean, so everything is a priority and everything is a dance. Um, Wasn't I can it raining in here when you interviewed? Yes, it was a point. <laughs> that should have like scared you away right there. Um, <laughs> It's raining yeah, in that in the elevator could break down. Um, but I, I also know, I spent a year learning the people and the traditions and the culture of this district and these five towns. And I got to tell you, you got to go slow to go fast around here. You, you can't, that's, that's Russ. Um, you can't, I can't push myself, push myself on people too much. Now, I was in Sunderland and I was cautioned that I was maybe a little bit too rough in the meeting or too, um, I missed that. that I, for, I forget what the term was, but not working with them, but working against them. And that's not the way I work. I generally get what I need without having to be a bully. Uh, I think there's an idea out there that I'm not strong and that's not the idea. That's not the real me, but I also, again, have to mitigate everything I do. And I have to be very careful of people and their feelings and their connections. Everybody's married to somebody else, and then they're the cousins and their relatives, and their wives are working and they're teaching, you know. So I am doing the best I can. I will rewrite my goals to uh, definitely encompass the $3.5 million uh, bond proposal that we have. Again, I've already been laying groundwork with the towns. Um, I have gotten some feedback already on that, that, that we might need to be looking at grants for some of those things, and I've gotten names and suggestions from the town administrators. But a lot of these decisions are votes from you folks, the town selectmen, the people out there voting in their homes, the, the, fin, the FinCons. I, I can only present so much. Again, same thing tonight. If there's a town that doesn't want to join with what we're doing, even though it's best practice, they're on their own. What else can I do? So I, I, I walk that line of being respectful and understanding and telling you what I think is best. You come see me in my office, I'll tell you what I think is best. I'll tell you that Sunderland does an amazing job on $13,000 a student. We have other schools we're paying $17,000 a student. Sunderland's doing fantastic. So I can tell you those things, but are they politically right? I mean, does everybody want to hear that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think if you just, if you had something that was just like, you know, budget, another point in here that was budget leadership okay. with some points like you did in the other ones, like the outreach one, which I think is great. Things that are within your control, obviously. So. Yeah. Those, you know, those things, which I, I think like some of the stuff that's under outreach could apply there. Mm -hmm. Meeting with the town administrators, getting yeah. into that game is huge. Um, you know, yeah. working with school committee chairs on, you know, so. before town meetings. I know, <laughs> that and that's stuff. something that I, I do, I like to do. Watch. I put the hand up higher. Mary. You saw it. Oh, I'm sorry. Mary, you. <laughs> We're supposed hey, to thank recognize you, her after me. Yeah, that's okay. I think I'm understanding where you're going with well, it. I don't can need we just, to say anything. Mary's, oh, well, Mary's, to wait to say anything Mary's first. No, that's okay. <laughs> I'm not going to have Mary get mad at me. No, I don't get mad. I don't get mad. Um, I just, um, sitting here, taking all this in, looking at these ahead of time. First of all, I just don't think it's the, the format or the right place to talk about goals of a predecessor. I don't think I don't think this is the format for it. I don't think that should enter the conversation. I feel like you're talking about writing the ship, which means it was wrong before. I don't think this is the place for that either. But I, you know, and I mean that with all due respect. Um, looking at these goals, though, I find one and two not measurable. So um, I know you're overseeing it, but technically, a superintendent could have no involvement in number two, and it could still happen. And I wouldn't know one way or another. So the reason I'm worried about measurable is because <coughs> next spring, when we're doing your evaluation, I want to be sure that they're measurable. This is a huge year in year number two of the contract. And I think these goals have to be just right. It's a big year. 
Um, last, last year, at least for Frontier, I believe there were six out of 11 um, evaluations returned, and we need 11 out of 11 this year. We have to have that for you and for us. And so I just want to make sure they're measurable and clear and encompass everything that we've got going on. I don't think the, the bond that we may or may not be able to do, I don't think the outcome of it rests with you. No. But, but as a leader, I think, I think that is a really good suggestion to have as part of it. So thank you. You're welcome. So just just, just uh, the, the thing that um, amazed me about the superintendent evaluation process is that although we have to send them into the state, they, they shred them upon receipt. They check off a box that says that they've been received and they shred them. Nobody, no human being reads these. It's, it's true. And, 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 and like, you know, we can't, you can't write anything that you can get in trouble, whatever. It's just, we do this for our own amusement and, and edification. And, so, I mean, my experience, that being said, my experience during all these years, I mean, I, I frequently have not participated in the evaluate, doing it because to me it just seems so much like kabuki theater and just not too terribly relevant to what I see and experience. And um, so t t the more grounded in reality and the, the, I mean, I, a lot of what everybody else is saying, I, I agree with. The more concrete, finite, measurable, grounded in reality, the better off it works. I think, I think we've heard certainly a number of suggestions. Lynn, would you uh, please take on the task of uh, adding a goal on finance and... Um, I'll remove one and two them, and I'll add... Make them... Finance. Nice. Thank you. <coughs> Patty, do you have some questions? I do. I just spoke with the attorney. I just spoke with the attorney um, about regarding the vote. Um, he said that because we don't have a union agreement, that we each time each elementary school committee should vote themselves, mm -hmm. um, and they could vote tonight because it was on the joint. Okay. But then, if someone did, did file a complaint, we'd have to revote it on a posted uh, okay. agenda for each individual school committee. Okay. Well, I still think that's a, a risk worth taking from yeah. my perspective. So, could we add as a superintendent goal um, a union agreement? <laughs> until we until we get somewhere with a regionalization, that's not a bad yeah. idea, Why don't we Mr. K twelve or, or K six. Well, no, or? but I mean, this is something that I keep hearing about year after year. It really, it's a missing piece of paper. It, it, it has nothing to do with our other goals down the road, perhaps of those sorts of things, but. We should have a union agreement so that we don't have these issues, and so somebody should be looking at working with Russ. I don't know, working with you know. It sounds like it was created once and lost, and so we should really. No, it never existed. I called the state. So it never existed. So we don't exist. I mean, so I'm just saying it'd be something to add that would be a very um, laudable thing for administration to help us with. And I'd be happy to. Are we going to table the goals into our individual meetings in the future, possibly the next meeting? Mm -hmm. Is that Bob made the motion from Frontier? We never got a second unless, we, unless somebody wants a second. But that motion was to approve the. Yeah, correct. Correct. So, so if no one makes a second, somebody else had additional goals for what? Nobody was going to put. But it's not like we're going to have additional goals just written up tonight. We're going no, to vote on them. I think I heard the chairman. Cutterback sort of suggested that um, Dr. Carey would maybe mm -hmm. work on some goals and maybe bring them forward. So I withdraw my motion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So no action taken. <clears throat> and I guess to request action. to bring right to the So we can okay. bring it to another. We'll bring it to individual school committee meetings sure. on when she has that completed. So I need a motion from Frontier to adjourn to go into our Oh, got, I'm sorry. Superintendent. I'm sorry. Oh. I thought you were going to get there. Sorry. Yes. Oh, I need to. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, so I'm handing out the strategic plan that we developed. Mm -hmm. This plan is um, 
The focus of the district strategic plan, the three focus areas were developed through a team, uh, a team process over several years, encompassing many uh, multiple sources of data from both our staff and outside experts, which include audits from the Department of Education, Curriculum Service Management, and our own data gathered from classroom observations. This information drove the original development of our district improvement plan, which was in place when I came here in 2016. We are continuing to our work in instructional practice based on the work that has been done in previous years. We want to continue improving on the foundation of what's been set within the last four years and to be a guide for the individual schools as they make their own school improvement plans with their school consoles. As you can see, instructional practice is a goal that I took on myself, which I will now take off, but it is a district strategic goal that we need to continue working on. The spirit of the strategic plan is exactly the same as it has been in the years before I, re I arrived. We are dedicated to using high quality research-based best practices, including differentiated instruction and personalized learning, as well as the effective use of data provided from assessments that helps us understand the needs of each student. I see it in action every day and in every classroom. Our special ed task force, which was another goal of mine that I'm taking off, the mission is to ensure that we, as educators, embrace the notion that both regular education and special education educators form one system of support for all students and to develop a true collaborative approach to professional practice. The Special Education Task Force will complete an evaluation of their program and develop improvement, an improvement plan district-wide practices and procedures. Currently, we have an updated Special Education Service Manual services manual posted on our website. It was updated this summer. So that's the strategic plan and those are the three areas we're focusing on and those this is essentially where I took my goals from. Instructional practice, special education services, and analysis and data uh, assessment and data analysis so that we can meet the needs of each individual student because they come to us different and each child has a different profile and through learning their own personal needs we can serve them better. This is again a teamwork, a team effort. We've worked on this. This has been in place for years. The foundation is there. We'd like to continue the work that we've been doing from the previous years before I came. Yes, Doug. Oh. Uh, thanks. And, and I, you know, personally, I, I, I would like to see you not drop instructional practice and special education task force from your goals. Um, I think, you know, maybe some of the, again, some of the bullets that are the things that, you know, really is what your role in that is, which is to, you know, lead the review of it and demonstrate to us that that's happened or whatever. You know, so just those kinds of things so that, you know, those are the things that are within your control and that we ultimately do hold you accountable for. Those are the things that I value, right. the students in the classrooms. I value what they're learning and what they're experiencing and I go to the classrooms. I go to the classrooms all the time right. and I'm really really putting myself in their place and hoping that they're getting a quality experience. And, and, I I, and as do all of us. And I think so I think that the feedback is really more just think you know where we where what your particular role in that process is, is and obviously it's leadership, but but to the extent that you can define that specifically in different cases, what that leadership will look like and how we'll get reporting on it or, or you know those are the things that are going to be where you know, we look at the end of the year and you said you were going to do that and well, you did that. Yeah. Um, you know, as opposed to a kind of gray area, well, um, you know, I mean, obviously your staff is going to be doing a lot of this. Um, and the schools but, will be doing it through their own. Right. And, um, and you have a particular role in that. So I kind of think to where you can clarify that and these. But I, but I would say that means we want you to drop <laughs> instructional practice or. or Thanks, Doug. Anybody else have a question? I, I don't have a question. I think that, that this is obviously, this is a great thing that's been worked on for years. I would like to make a motion that the Frontier accepts the strategic plan. Second it. As written. Anybody else have a question from Frontier? All in favor? 
from Frontier. Opposed? Do we have a motion from the union? We'll make a motion from the union to approve the strategic plan for 2017 to 2019. And a second? Second. It's not on the list of things to be voted, but does that matter? Yeah. I know it's not on the list of things to vote, but uh, I'm assuming they wanted to vote, so. We'll take a vote. All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. Do we have a question or what? Um, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Same. Uh, it's unanimous. Thank you. Is there a superintendent's report? No, not tonight. Okay. I'll entertain a motion from the union to adjourn. Katie. Katie. I'll second. I'll let Trevor go. Okay. Sorry, Trevor. <laughs> There's um, enough of them out there. I mean, I know people are tired. But all in favor? From Frontier. <laughs> I mean, from, uh, from Union. Union. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Opposed? To adjourn, please, for Frontier. Second. second. Damien, second. <laughs> Frontier, all in favor? Adjourn. Opposed? Phil? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. That's all right, Phil. <laughs> Okay. We are adjourned to our meeting. <laughs> Damien, do you have the first? Uh,